Howdy, my name is Mech. Um, my life mission is to help curate a living map of the world's knowledge and to promote uh, responsible, equitable use of access to information. Uh, so you're probably seeing something that is pretty familiar right now, uh, which is a text editor. Uh, I can type something, select things, I can copy and paste. Uh, but most people today have come to expect a lot more from a text editor. Um, they want something that can really be a tool for thought. Uh, the biggest problem with taking notes in my mind is most people write a note once because the exercise of writing a note is helpful and useful and cathartic. And chances are they won't use that note again. And occasionally we're saved by our notes. We'll, we'll do a search and we'll happen to find something that, that has useful documentation or something that was critical to, to a project we were once working on. But by and large, most people don't use their, their notes over and over again. It's like write once and then revisit never, read never. Um, and one of the reasons that people use Google all of the time um, but they don't use their, their notes the same way is because there isn't a search engine. Uh, there isn't a, a true search index of interconnected thought on top of their notes. And what happens is every single time someone tries to type a note, um, they're, they're repeating themselves. There's no way as you're typing uh, to know whether you've had that idea before because the tools or the technology that augments your thought process doesn't inform you. So I want to show a really quick example of, of what I mean here. Um, I'm going to go to GitHub. Uh, GitHub is a, a place where you can host your code online with version control and it also offers project management uh, configurations like the ability to open up issues about the software um, and so in this case I'm going to go to issues for the open library project which is one of the, the programs that I help run over at the Internet Archive which is a nonprofit archive and library and I'm going to open up a new issue and I'm going to start maybe it's a bug report and I'm going to start typing a uh, reading log I wonder see, if I type in reading log here. See, here's a good example. As I'm typing it in, it's actually doing a search through every previous issue that I've opened up. And it's reducing the probability that I'm gonna open up the same issue multiple times. This is especially useful if you're on a team with many people. Uh, and I may not know that Dreamy, for instance, had already opened up this issue. And so a tool like this, search just in time, in real time, uh, allows me to, um, to augment my process and discover where I may be repeating my or someone else's work. And I think the world just uh, operates more smoothly when we're not repeating each other's work. But nothing like that exists really in a plain text editor. Um, every time I type in Michael E. Carpellis or Mac, I'm recreating a, uh, a new expression. There's no way for me to see, for instance, easily see all the times that, that mech has been mentioned. Now, uh, Wikipedia actually has a, a similar problem. Uh, so if I go to uh, Benjamin Franklin here, then you can see that there's a lot of so we have paragraph form. The, the main Wikipedia article is in the form of paragraphs, but we have a bunch of entities and terms that are discussed or mentioned. And in the right side of the page, uh, we can see this sidebar where there's a lot of structured data. For instance, it says Ben Franklin is uh, was a, a vice president of um, uh, sixth president of Pennsylvania. Um, we have who he was preceded by. This is all structured data. And where this comes from is a knowledge graph, which is also run by Wikimedia, the group behind the Wikipedia project. And that's called Wikidata. And if I type in Ben Franklin within Wikidata, we'll see this whole network of interconnected um, 
linked data, such as Ben Franklin's gender is male, Ben Franklin's country of citizenship is the United States. And there are actually utilities which allow you to make very complex queries to say, for instance, one of my favorite that I saw uh, in Wikidata is show me all of the students of the students of von Neumann. So uh, that would show all these PhD candidates that are the students of the students of von Neumann. So when you have data in a structured format, there's some really magical things that you can do. Um, and imagine if you were taking notes and you were to say, show me every single note about von Neumann um, that also include uh, von Neumann students or their students. There's a critical flaw with Wikidata and ma many other platforms, which is Wikidata, just like Wikipedia, has a notability policy. So I can't just add myself, I can't add mech into Wikidata. Uh, and so as a result, uh, I created a, uh, an open source platform of my own, which is very, very, very simple, called graph.global. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you why I created this. So before Wikidata, there was another website called Freebase. And uh, Freebase by Danny Hillis and, and Veda and, and uh, a group of other folks basically created this community crowdsourced knowledge graph, which ended up getting sold to Google and it became their Google Now knowledge graph. And now Facebook has their own knowledge graph too, right? I'll show you what I mean. If I go to facebook.com, one of the things that I really love about Facebook is um, so here's my friend Leaf, who I went to, to college with. I can say at Leaf. And I can tag him, and I can see that his entity exists within a graph. And so if I'm treating Facebook almost like a blog, I can say um, while at the, here's another example, University of Vermont uh, with Leaf K. Brooks, dot, 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 right? And the more entities that exist in the system, the faster it is to type notes and the more structured data you have about the notes. So then presumably I could do a search for Leaf K. Brooks and the University of Vermont. Um, but you can't really do that in, in systems even like Google Docs, right? Google Docs has like very, very primitive abilities to, to tag individuals. And you can't create a tag for arbitrary concepts. And so I thought it would be neat to create an open source graph, potentially that anyone could use, that could power these different use cases. So uh, if I could create a graph of relationships and then post that in the cloud somewhere, and then anyone on their own applications, whether it's their own WordPress blog, their own website, something like Facebook could at mention any entity from, from this graph. So what you're seeing here is the worldwide graph. Um, which consists of two things. That's it. It's really simple. Everything in the entire system is an entity or a, a card, you can call it. An example of an entity is the word employee um, or the word founder or even myself, Mac, which you can see up here. And uh, if I type hello world, that could be an entity. So I'm gonna press control and then enter. And now I've created a new entity in the system, which is more or less blank. Um, in this case, I wanted the, the graph interface, the, the actual user interface for graph.global to be very similar to Wikidata, but make it really easy to add new entities and to connect them together. So all you really need are the arrow keys um, the way that you navigate and actually shows here on the top. Um, if I press left, I leave that context and go back to the main view where I can do a search for an entity like uh, Mac, which is what I'll, what I'll do. And then if I press right, that will enter that card or that context. Um, so here we see that Mech was the seventh entity I ever created in the system. And what we're seeing here is is entities, but we're also seeing the second type that exists in this, the system, which is a relationship. A relationship is always a three-way connection between entities, because entity, entity, entity. However, the middle entity 
generally describes a relationship between the other two entities. For instance, Mech is friends with maybe Leaf or Drew or Steven. Here you can see here, Mech is the card that we're currently on or the, the entity that is currently in view and selected. And here we can see Mech date of birth, which is the middle of the three, the relationship, and then 1988, 07, uh, And you can do some really cool things with the system. Like, uh, let's say we wanted to browse. Um, I can click any entity such as date of birth and I can see any date of birth that is registered in the system and all of the people like Connor White Sullivan. Uh, and Connor, we can see here, um, is the founder of Rome Research. I can click Rome Research and learn more about it. I can see that Vlad Sitalo uses Rome Research and then I can learn about Vlad to see where did I meet him? Well, I met him at a Memex event at the Archive House in 2020-02-16. So I can navigate at the speed of thought and that's what a lot of note systems are missing is a Google-like interface for your own personalized Google interface, uh, your, your mind map on top of your notes. And so that's what Graph.Global is. And anyone can, can add relationships or use these two input boxes to add a new edge. So for instance, the Memex event uh, at, Internet, at, at Archive House maybe had an attendee, which I can tab complete here, uh, sorry, attendee of uh, maybe this is, you know, Jeremy Nixon was there. And then I can add that and it will, it'll add down to the, the list here. And I can see all of my notes and conversations, etc. Now this interface is very clunky. This is not how most people take notes, but it is a great user interface for analyzing the graph database. And a lot of this might seem very similar to, uh, to what Rome Research or Notion or other systems are doing. And that just happens to be because this project was started around 2016, 2017. Um, if I go to, let's see, if I can go to graph.global ID number one, um, we can see this was created. The fact that Mac likes Wikidata was created in September 20th, 2016. Um, and we can go back in time and see where, where Connor and I originally met. Um, go to Connor here. Um, we can see there's a conversation back in 2017 where we were talking about a book, Moral Mazes, Walled Gardens, um, and we can jump deeper into the conversation uh, or that date. Um, but when, so when I was originally talking to Connor, uh, one of the ideas that we, we and also Ivan Zhang, who, who uh, created Notion, um, all have in common is that we're very inspired by uh, Venivar Bush, uh, who wrote a very famous essay called As We May Think in 1945, I think July. And here I can actually follow the link and go directly to the, the Atlantic essay because Venivar Bush was a proponent of this idea that um, around the time of, of World War I, World War II, we had already gone through this industrial revolution where we had created physical hardware and technology to augment production, the means of production. But we had very few uh, pieces of technology, right? Like, think about when the notepad uh, was invented. We had very few pieces of technology that truly allow people to augment their thought. This was pre-Google, etc. And then Ivar Bush was describing this microfilm system with projections where you could have two documents side by side and you could draw links between them and connect them and maybe even save the entire environment on a new piece of microfilm that you could share with someone else. So they could basically save and pull up, uh, basically recover um, the entire environment um, that you were, you were using previously. So it's like saving and restoring an environment. And a lot of this was the, the foundation of the, the World Wide Web. Tim Berners-Lee, um, uh, Ted Nelson, even Alan Kay, Brett Victor, and, and of course some of the folks that we're, we're seeing contemporary, such as, as Connor and, and Ivan, et cetera, uh, we're, we're all inspired by this notion of the memex, the memory index. How can we, how can we create this second brain? How can we uh, create a knowledge graph that we can query our own personal Google? And so graph.global is the first step. What I really wanted to do is, is uh, uh, and, and what Connor and I and others were talking about, is have a, a text editor where as you're typing, 
you can uh, tag any entity from from your graph, just like just like I showed in in Facebook, where um, as I'm typing my blog post or essay, um, I, I can say at Simon and Garfunkel, and I, I know anytime I'm mentioning uh, Simon and sorry Gar Garfunkel. Anytime I'm mentioning Simon and Garfunkel, I'm talking about the same Simon and Garfunkel. And you can uh, make really interesting queries on this data set. So um, to take graph.global and make it something that one can actually use as, like this isn't a very nice way to take notes. Uh, the interface is, it doesn't offer many affordances, but it does make it really easy to navigate. As you saw, we, we typed in you know, something like Memex, um, then I can I can select Memex and see that the inventor was Vannevar Bush. It's similar to mind maps. Um, the definition is a memory index. Uh, there's this it's a topic uh, within a book called Glut Mastering Information Through the Ages, which I think was by Alex Wright. I can click that and see the author is Alex Wright. I can click on Alex Wright and see uh, not exactly a friend of Paul Flay, but uh, he was certainly inspired by him, and I, I could write that. Um, as a, a uh, I could I could ed edit that, and um, then I can go to his personal website if I want, and learn more about Alex Wright. So it's great once you have the memory index built uh, to navigate and recall thought. Uh, what I'd like to show you is is an open source. I wouldn't call it a Rome replacement, um, but it's it's in the same style as Rome um, that someone could potentially spin up if they want to take notes and use either graph.global, you wouldn't have to set anything up. You could just use graph.global as, as your instance as well. And we could all work on the same Wikipedia-like graph together. That's my dream, is that we all, instead of working in our own silos, everyone has access to the same graph. And of course, people can create their own graphs. It'd be great if they were public and interoperable and could speak to each other. And preferably, we had content addressability, which is really a fancy way of saying it would be great if even if we have separate graphs, when you talk about mech and someone else talks about mech, they can both be talking about the same entity with the same address across instances of graph.global. So on my website, uh, this is my, my personal website. Um, I have a section of, of essays. And one of the ways that I write these essays is I go to slash edit and I get an interface that looks very similar to, to Facebook. And I'll say demo of graph uh, global. And then I'll put in the title here. I'll say demo. I wonder if I have a, so I do already have an entity in, in my graph for the word demo. So I'm gonna click that. And if I go back here, I can actually type demo and see that it exists in the graph and I can see uh, the word demo came up in a conversation between me and my friend Kartik. If you want to know who Kartik is, then, then you, can, you can see we have similar interests. We've been in a few different conversations, including one with uh, Anthony DeFranco. And of course, then I can, I can look at more information about Anthony DeFranco. But here I'm going to say demo of graph.global or the worldwide graph. And uh, you can see a preview below here, uh, and I can say that uh, today I did a demo video of graph.global. Um, we talked about Notion, and in this case, Notion doesn't happen to, to exist in my system yet. However, if I just do an at Notion and press enter, it creates the entity on the fly, and so if I go back here, uh, and I, I go home and then I say Notion, then now there's an entity that exists. And I can also do, um, is that right? Notion, Ivan, Zhao, Zhao, sorry, Ivan Zhao, not, not Zhao. So I can create a, an entity for Ivan. Uh, and then I can go back to my essay here and say, we talked about Notion um, by Ivan um, et al. And we talked about Rome by Connor et al. Um, we discussed Wikidata 
and Freebase. And you can see just how much faster you can, you can type an essay. And of course, anyone else who is going through your essay can then click on any one of these terms and it will bring you into the mind map, into the, the graph, so other people can explore um, and, and dig in more deeply. So we discussed Wikidata and Freebase and their, their history. Um, we talked about one of my favorite essays. Uh, um, by Vannevar Bush called As We May Think, um, which inspired Engelbart, Engelbart. Uh, oh, he's actually in there already. Engelbart, Brett Victor, Alan Kay. Um, Ted Nelson and many other visionaries. Um, we talked about Google's knowledge graph, Google's knowledge graph, um, and described how we could, how we may create our own open source, potentially decentralized, um, public knowledge graph, which anyone, which the public uh, can use to create rich note-taking applications. And how about tools for, for thought? And that seems like a good summary of what we've gone over in this, this video. And maybe I can even go back here and point to the source code for anyone who wants it. The source code, the source code. For uh, graph.global uh, can be found here. And now when I um, when I post this, something else that is magical that happens is because we have this knowledge graph, um, now you can see a high, you can see excerpts basically of every tag that is mentioned in this essay. But the cool part is similar to Rome or any of the, the uh, other, uh, the brain or, or any of the other Memex applications out there, you can see a list of which of these tags also appear in other essays that I've, I've written. For instance, here's a critique, a responding to critique being pro authors and libraries, which mentions Google, um, or a conversation that I had uh, with Arya Sabeti. Um, that essay also mentions Vannevar Bush, Connor White Sullivan, Freebase, Wikidata, World Wide Graph, Rome Research. So There's probably a pretty uh, similar essay to the, the one that I just wrote. And of course, I can update the URL here and go to edit um, uh, and see that I have like an extra space. So I can, I should just be able to, yeah, I can edit so it has all of the, the other affordances one would need. Anyway, uh, that is my, my short demo of graph.global, um, which has a, uh, basically I've set up to be a graph database and then also a very basic system for being able to at tag any entity in the graph so that you can write your own rich blog posts. Uh, if you have any questions, please send me an email to hi at mek.fyi. Um, again, I'm Mech. And it was my pleasure demoing some of this software to you. I hope you have a great day.